the zipper holding the hood in because it's easier to put the hood on and off mm -hmm. with the zipper than it is with the snaps. Mm -hmm. Then there's zippers up the side so that the jacket will fit tightly around the hips, keeping that straight, sleek look that it should have. And very often you'll find a zipper hidden in the uh, arm. And Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You'll excuse the fact that I'm out of breath, but about 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of Dallas. Let me quote to you this. And I'll, you'll excuse me if I am out of breath. A bulletin, this is from the United Press from Dallas. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And instead, it looks like we got a lot of disorder. We still have been, and after 9 11, we've been more sensitive. But it is the awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. Now much has been said by the Secretary of State and others about the new world order, about a defining moment in history. I have no doubt about the potential of this moment to be defining in terms of history. But that definition can be negative as well as positive. And how negative or positive it will be will depend on what kind of new world order we really create. As I've told you before, because I love it so much, they also created the Great Seal of the United States. And that Great Seal of the United States has on it Novus Order Seclorum, a new order for the centuries, for the ages, forever. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used I think only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. It is not our common beliefs that have brought us together here, but our common interests and our common hopes. The interest that each of us has to maintain our independence and the security of our peoples, and the hope that each of us has to build a new world order in which nations and peoples with different systems and different values can live together in peace, respecting one another while disagreeing with one another. Letting history rather than the battlefield be the judge. The transatlantic partnership was never just the foundation of our security. It was the foundation of our way of life. It was forged an experience of the most bitter and anguished kind. Out of it came a new Europe, a new world order. I think the new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. We have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And we've agreed that in doing so, we will build a more sustainable and more open and a fairer global society. The, the way we're going to win over the long term is not just militarily. We've got to win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've got to invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure and have no uh, means for young people to to get ahead we've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see more now of our special coverage here tonight life in the US in 10 years time by that time there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. 
Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history. But thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. In fact, it's already here. The latest home security locks use fingerprints to control deadbolts. And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. My name is Bob. Um, in view of its potential to, to be possibly the biggest game changer ever, do you have any plans to enter the field of artificial intelligence? And in general, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's even close to being ready for prime time? I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Um, so we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Doesn't work out. I take it there will be no HAL 9000 going up to Mars. <laughs> HAL 9000 would be easy. <laughs> it's way more complex than, I mean, it would put HAL 9000 to shame, yeah. Honey, there's something you should know. Nine minutes and 23 seconds. I win. 